Hello, this is Stella. Welcome to Finance 201, Introduction to Investments, where you'll be learning about stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, and more. So this course is for people who know the basic concepts of personal finance, such as saving and, sp saving and uh, controlling spending. So by now, you have a pile of money. It can be a small pile, a big pile, but you have a pile of money that you want to start investing. And uh, and if you don't if you don't have math you don't have a if you haven't mastered the concept of uh, spending and saving yet, I recommend that you go back to finance 101 where you learn um, how to spend and make money and save so you have a some capital to invest. So once you have a capital to invest, come to this course. So let's get started. So here we have uh, the flow chart from, from last session. So in Finance 101, we discussed income, spending, savings. Now we're in 201, investing. This is the course schedule. So here we start with intro and learning outcome. And uh, we have a uh, safe investment like GICs. We have fixed income. We have uh, equities like stocks, mutual fund ETFs, real estate, commodities. And then we have a little bit on sustainable investing and faith-based investing. And then we have portfolio management concepts, followed by investment pitfalls, the concept of financial freedom, financial independence. And then you have your certificate of completion. There are uh, 47 slides, approximately an hour-ish of time required. So let's get started. Learning outcomes. Gain actionable ideas to increase income and spend wisely. Have basic understanding of budgeting, managing debt and savings. Grow your own money and prepare for retirement. Tax-free savings. Invest according to your richest values. Basic tax insurance. There we go. So this is a bit about me. I'm the course designer and presenter. Have a master's degree in finance and bachelor's degree of uh, environmental science from a Canadian university. Uh, I work in the uh, environmental sector um, before I changed to, to investments. So I was a former stock analyst to high net worth investors on Bay Street. Bay Street is the, the Canadian version of Wall Street, but was now Wolf though, I'm a nice stock analyst. And also, I work in pension investment consulting to million billion dollar pension funds. I've taught financial literacy investments for Canadian provincial government. Also, work on new and supported principles of responsible investments, where I implement the, the concepts of responsible investment uh, for an university endowment fund. On the side, I teach piano, and that, and um, also I might maybe make some piano courses. So here we go. What are the different types of investments? So first we have stocks. I should start from bonds. This is the the the, the safer, safer, more risky, uh, medium risk, uh, risky, medium risk. This is the safest. So deposits are quite safe, and then bonds are quite safe. Funds safeish. Stocks are not safe. So we'll know why as we go along. Here we go. Start with the safest. The safest one is the uh, GIC Guaranteed Investment Certificate. So it's debt that you pay a, pays a fixed amount of interest in the form of coupon payment to investors. The investment payments are typically made semi semi annually, while the principal investor returns to the investor at maturity. So it's like you buy a certificate where you put in money in there for three months, and then the or to a year, it was locked. Then uh, usually the return right now is around five percent, four or five percent. And then if you buy GIC, you're guaranteed to have your money back. So whatever you put in, you you you'll get it back plus interest. So this is the safest safest type of investment that one can do. But of course, the yield or the interest rate is quite low. And uh, if you are in the, the Islam countries, this, this is not allowed your country, but it's allowed everywhere else in North America, uh, in Europe, 
uh, for people who cannot invest in interest bearing uh, investments go to the uh, faith-based investment portion I also have a course coming up on uh, faith-based investments so why do we invest uh, use your money to make more money right it's a way of generating passive income that which means that you don't have to uh, work you have your money working for you so money is growing money on its own of course the inflation is around two percent or the government aims to have two percent inflation so if we don't invest our money will get uh, eaten away so we have to make sure we at least keep up with inflation and also the the big reason is that you can increase your net worth so you can retire when older uh, if you invest at six percent a year uh, after inflation um, that means that you can retire with more money so start with fixed income and bonds is this that pays a fixed amount of interest in the form of coupon payments with investors so this is similar to uh, this is like GIC where you in, you buy a bond it can be government bonds can be uh, airline bonds can be Costco bonds um, the bonds that uh, will pay you interest rate as an interest the interest payments are typically made semi-annually while the principal invested return maturity so this is similar to GIC is true here you go these are the type of bonds uh, because I'm in Canada I'm using Canada example um, but I think it's quite similar to different countries as well so for example if you buy a provincial bond the BC bond is where uh, that's where I live it has a credit rating of AAH AAH means A high so it has a better rating uh, on the higher end but if you look at uh, the Quebec it's a different province in Canada has AA low so it means it's still very good it's still A level but then has a lower um, lower rating than H then high but it's still very good it's still A it's not B or C so those are A so here we go if you have a lower credit rating the risk is higher hence they pay more in interest if you have a higher credit rating the risk is lower so the interest rate is lower so it makes sense right higher the risk higher the yield because say if you're investing your money to buy a bond government bond uh, of any sort can be a city bond can be a government bond can be a provincial government state government whatever government bond any bond that the higher the risk the higher they have to pay you for the risk because if you are going to buy put your money at risk you have to be compensated for the risk hence the higher the risk the higher the interest rate that you get from the bond it's the same for a corporate bond so if you buy a corporate bond from a grocery store like Costco Safeway whatever a or grocery store that you have in your country uh, the interest rate will be lower than if you buy an airline if you buy an airline company because airline companies are always going out of always at the bankruptcy level because they have high capital cost so airline company will pay you a higher interest rate because the risk is higher for airline than for a grocery store let's go to the next so this is an example of stocks uh, stocks is where it gets riskier because for bonds you're guaranteed the return of your principal but for stocks you can lose a lot of money because if you put in the stocks and the stock value goes down you lose actually your capital so it's actually a higher risk level so that's why we're looking at looking at looking at it carefully before you invest uh, so this is actually from Yahoo Finance you can use Google Finance or uh, anywhere and any, any any new apps that you're using that's fine because you have they share the same information so this is actually a, a telecom company the telephone company internet company and I like this internet company because uh, it does uh, it's considered utilities what's good about utility is that sorry go back here 
What is good about utility is that when the market is down, when the stock market goes down because of a crisis like COVID, we, all, we still need internet, we still need telephone. So no, no matter what happens, uh, you always need internet companies. Unless the world ends, then, then that's an exceptional case. So, so that's why I find that uh, for people who are really uh, conservative, they are scared, they want a safe stock. Internet companies are usually like telephone companies, telecom, telecommunication companies are usually quite safe. Um, but watch out that they have enough money to build an infrastructure because you need telephone poles. Those things are quite expensive, right? You need telephone poles uh, everywhere. So to make sure that uh, these companies uh, give you, uh, you have enough um, capital um, to uh, to build the, the infrastructure. But at the same time, they are paying back the money that they make from the, the subscribers or, or, or the customers is enough to pay on the debt pay down the debt on the telephone poles. So say that you have a internet company, telecom company, they collect money from customers every month from internet and, or telephone or cell phone. They use the money to pay down the cost of telephone poles or the cost of building the network, like you know, fiber optic cable. So if they have enough money to pay down the debt, and then uh, it means the company is uh, operating well, and this company, right, Rogers Communication at that time, was paying 3% dividend. So this was back in 2000. I actually made this slide during the pandemic. But today, they're paying 7% dividend. So the dividend yield actually changes. It, could, it can be like 3%, 6%. It changes according to the stock price. So let's look closely here. Uh, here is the closing pri the closing price of the, of yesterday or the previous uh, trading day. It opened at sixty three dollars and sixty one cents. The bid is people are trying to buy the stock at sixty three dollars and eighty six cents, and people are selling it. They are selling it at uh, sixty three dollars and eighty eight cents. And the range, the trading range is this range, 63, 42 cents to 95 cents. And then in the last year, 52 weeks range. So in within one year, you go from $50 to $67. So that's quite a, a big range. This is how many shares have been traded, the average volume. And you see that uh, the stock symbol is RCI-B.TO. TO is a Toronto Stock Exchange. So if you're in the U.S., it would be, uh, would be uh, NYSE. If you're NASDAQ, it would be uh, NSDAQ. If you're in Hong Kong, it would be HKE. The, the London would be, you know, L. Yeah, I used to cover, I used to cover European stocks uh, when I was mining. But So look for the, for the ticker symbol that you like, for the company that you like. And that trades on your country exchange. Uh, but the fundamentals are the same. All these statistics is the same for every stock. There's the market cap, beta. So high beta means that it's more, it goes up more and down with the market. Right? Low beta means safe, stable. If beta is low, it means that it's not sensitive to the changes in the market. So, for example, uh, if you have an internet company like NVIDIA, Google, Google or not, more Google is really big now. So, say Tesla. Tesla has a high beta because it goes up and down a lot, right? More than the market, right? So, like, it's really volatile. But if you have a telecommunication company or a grocery store, the beta is low because it's pretty stable. That's why I picked this company because it's really stable. The P ratio, P ratio is the price per earnings. So 19 times earnings. So this price is not 19 times uh, the how much the company makes. Say the company makes $1 and uh, you're paying 19 times more 